said I'ma crush it, call me. We here at Unsung decided to get out for a little recreation, so we're out walking around on Mount Washington, overlooking the renovations going on at the point. I'm Anthony Walker, social director and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. In this episode, we hit the rivers with special guest Lisa Schroeder of River Life and the trail with Robert Eisenberg. But first, let's take a look at what's going on with our area nonprofits. Carnegie Museum of Art presents Natural History, a playful exhibition that explores the myriad of ways that contemporary artists respond to nature. It's showing in the museum's forum gallery until October 14th. The exhibit is organized by Dan Byers, the Richard Armstrong Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art. Natural History showcases more than two dozen contemporary art forms in a variety of media from the museum collection including several that are on view for the first time. The Forum Gallery is situated at the nexus of two museums, Carnegie Museum of Art and Carnegie Museum of Natural History, that share a common facility. For buyers, this physical location is the ideal venue to explore these two ways of knowing and navigating the world. For more information on this natural collaboration, please visit cmoa.org. Park Ing Day Pittsburgh is a one-day event where parking spots are transformed into temporary public spaces open to everyone. Last year's event had more than 30 parks in Pittsburgh and they would like to see that number grow this year. The fifth annual Parking Day Pittsburgh is Friday September 21st and there is an open call for participants. If you are interested in creating a park just email parkingdaypgh at gmail.com Young boomers are innovative, entrepreneurial, and highly engaged in their community, said Frederick Thiemann, president of the Buell Foundation and one of the organizers of the Experienced Dreamers Project, a national contest that invited entrepreneurs ages 45 and up to submit proposals for launching their dream venture in Pittsburgh. Tess Lohakona of East Aurora, New York, fits that profile and was selected as the 100 grand winner of Pittsburgh's Experienced Dreamers Contest. Lohakona will receive $50,000 when she completes her move to Pittsburgh this fall. After living in Pittsburgh for one year, the remaining $50,000 will be placed in a charitable fund at the Pittsburgh Foundation to be used by Lohokono in support of Pittsburgh-based nonprofits. Designed to draw attention to Pittsburgh as a great place to live, work, and pursue new opportunities, the contest followed a study by the Jewish Healthcare Foundation, which found that attracting 1,250 high-income young boomers would generate an economic impact of $2.6 billion to the city over the next 20 years. It generates $36 million in state and local taxes and would create more than 900 new jobs. Ten years ago, the iconic three rivers of Pittsburgh were largely inaccessible. Christopher has the story and an update on how the work is going on the fountain at the point. Ah, Anthony, I don't know where you are right now, but I'm sitting here along the riverfront on a beautiful sunny day here in Pittsburgh. And yet, right behind me is one of the busiest thoroughfares in the city. That way, the Strip District. Over here are the stadiums. That's right, we're right downtown, right on the water. Now, in the few minutes that I've been sitting here, there have been bikers, walkers, kayakers, even the Gateway Clipper has come by here. Behind me, there's a guy fishing. But just 10 years ago, you wouldn't be able to do that. And we're gonna hear the story about how this came about and all the wonderful other developments that River Life has been involved in. We are at the David Lawrence Convention Center Riverfront Plaza. This is one of our newest parks. It opened about a year ago and it's, it provides a beautiful way for people to get from the city to the riverfront, for boats to pull in and take pass on rides around the river. It includes a native landscape with natural species that are in bloom with the beautiful black-eyed Susans. It connects the cultural district with the strip district and since this opened about a year ago you see a, a huge increase in cyclists and people ro rollerblading and skateboarding, walking their pets uh, during lunchtime. River Life is a really unusual citizen group. 
Um, they came together in 1999. Mayor Tom Murphy formed a task force, and it was a group of citizens who were thinking big for Pittsburgh. And they set out to create a vision to bring Pittsburgh's riverfronts from that once industrialized place to being the new center of the community and to making this a river city. Well, it's been a really exciting year for riverfront development in Pittsburgh. Uh, we had the opening of South Shore Riverfront Park by Southside Works, which is a dynamic new public space and trail connection that links the Southside Works neighborhood to the riverfront as well as the hot metal bridge. We've also been seeing uh, tremendous progress in the reconstruction of Point State Park which is wrapping up with the final phase, which is the reconstruction of the iconic Point State Park Fountain, which is expected to be completed in uh, late spring of 2013. Better than ever before, with uh, a higher jet of water, with state-of-the-art LED sustainable lighting, with a new disappearing waterfall feature and a splash pool for people of all ages to be able to come down and picnic and enjoy the fountain up close and of course enjoy the view of the fountain from the hills and valleys that have made Pittsburgh famous. One of our priorities right now is to complete the Mon Wharf landing project. There's only one piece left. It's a ramp system. It's a switchback ramp that will connect the riverfront to the Smithfield Street Bridge and to the Great Allegheny Passage. Well, since it's been such a big and bold year for Pittsburgh's riverfronts, it's appropriate that River Life's annual celebration, Party at the Pier, has a theme of neon and nature. The event is taking place Friday, September 7th at the North Shore Riverfront Amphitheater by Rivers Casino. And we are encouraging people to wear their, their brightest and boldest uh, neon cocktail attire for a grand celebration. Tickets are on sale at partyatthepier.com and I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more as we get closer to September 7th. When the going gets tough, the tough ride a bicycle 326 miles. Robert Eisenberg pedals from Pittsburgh to Washington DC along the Great Allegheny Passage in CNO Canal and the Trail, a new documentary that was produced in part by Pittsburgh on Video and Friends of the Riverfront. Eisenberg gave us this preview and we will keep you posted on where you can see the film later this month. On Friday, August 24th, you can swing salsa and cha-cha for the Homeless Children's Education Fund at Absolute Ballroom Center. More details are available at homelessfund.org. And if dancing is not your thing, it is Ladies Night at the Wine Loft also on August 24th. Ladies, you can come out, get your hair, makeup, and nails done shop for fall and enjoy a glass of wine with the women's center and shelter along with Gwen's girls. And last but not least, Saturday, September 8th, the ALS Association of Western PA will hold the 20th anniversary of the Walk to the Feet ALS at the Pittsburgh Zoo. Unsung's very own Christopher Whitlatch invites you to join his team and you can find out more information at the address on your screen. Thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghgunvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. I'm gonna go continue my walk. We'll see you next time. I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood has.
Alchemy. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Ain't 